The Eagles entered Monday's Christmas Day game against the Giants on a three-game losing streak. Thought the offense showed some positive signs. They put up 465 yards. Jalen Hurts had his first 300-plus yard passing game since the month of October. And yet it ended up being only an eight-point game. So was the offense back? What good did they do? Where were the issues? Let's dive into the film and take a look. On this first play, we get something that I've been asking for all season. The Eagles go under center, heavy personnel, and they don't run the football. They load up with a play-action pass, so we're going to get the play fake, and then the running back leaking out into the flat. We get a vertical route from Devonta Smith, and then a corner route by Dallas Goddard. We're running a three-level stretch play here, and it doesn't work remarkably well. I mean, you you see the linebackers flowing downhill, right? This is the effect that under center play action has. Hertz has to turn his back, but we get this blocked up well. But watch Goddard. Not a ton of separation here. That's a really good pass by Jalen Hertz. Puts the ball on the money. Have a seat, Dallas Goddard. You picked up a first down. See it from the back view here. Footwork's all different, right? But Hertz gets his body positioned towards Goddard, rips the ball down the sideline. That's a first down. Would love to see the Eagles flush that out some over the next couple weeks and into the playoffs. Here the Eagles have Devontae Smith in the slot. This is something I think they should be doing more. Put Devontae Smith in the slot and give him choice routes. What is a choice route? Uh, it's basically just a route that has the option to break out or to break in. You're reading the cornerback leverage. If the cornerback has... Um, Outside leverage, we're going to break inside. If he's got inside leverage, we break outside. Now, it's impossible to defend, really, unless you have a second player there. You're just going to take what the defense gives you as a route runner. The problem, the reason you don't always run option routes, is it does require a quarterback and a receiver to be on very precisely on the same page, the same timing. And so watch Devontae Smith here. He's going to read this cornerback. And he breaks outside, balls on target, that's a first down, and more because you break the tackle, get across midfield. Now when we watch from the back view, though, I want to point out why these are tricky. Because watch Jalen Hurts here. He's going to give like a little start to throw, a little hitch, right there. See how he separates and then has to pull it back in? I think it's because he thinks Smith is going to break inside. And he starts to separate and then he sees it's a false step and he's got to reset his feet and throw the ball. The little hitch there, um, these can go disastrously wrong if you're not on the same page. So it takes a lot of work to get on the same page with your receiver there. But I saw Devontae Smith on these several times in this game. I saw Dallas Goddard on one earlier in this game, and I think it's a really good move to flesh that out and allow Hurts to continue to make those reads with his receivers. Here the Eagles go four strong, a four-by-one set. We've got four receiving options to this side. This is clearly a cover zero look. We know that because all of these defensive backs are lined up in a line here. We don't have any safeties deep. Uh, so all six of these guys are probably coming. I mean, one of them might bail out into underneath coverage, but you've got essentially what is cover zero over the top. Now, the Eagles are going to respond with a screen pass to their punt returner, Britton Covey. And I like this idea. Um, you know, he's a good punt returner. Get him the ball with some blockers in front and a screen and see what can happen. And this could have been a really big play. We're going to get offensive linemen pulling out. You see the left side of the offensive line hits and releases, and now you've got numbers. You've got three linemen, three blockers here for four guys. And also, I just love Opeta peeling back here to seal off this defensive lineman. It's a really good play. You can see this is blocked up pretty well. We'll see it better from the back view. If Covey cuts this inside, he's got a long ways to run. Uh, but the Eagles get some yardage here off of this screen pass. I thought it was well executed. You've got Dallas Goddard blocking. You've got um, Julio Jones out blocking in front. But watch Opeta here. This is a heads-up play. Gets his head around, notices that this guy's peeling out, and he peels back to block him. And right here, if Covey takes this inside, he might have a lot of room to run. But he doesn't. He ends up bumping into Mylotta. And he goes down at the 40-yard line. But it's still a nice gain. It's a nice little wrinkle there, getting Britton Covey on the field. I'd like to see him on the field a little bit more as well uh, as a wide receiver as Quez Watkins' snaps get reduced. Now, this one is almost a disaster. 
Uh, there will be a pick six later in the game that was a fluke play, but this one is almost a pick six. It probably should have been. We're going to watch this corner right here. Uh, they know the Eagles' tendencies. We want to throw horizontal against the blitz, and he's just going to read this, and instead of blitzing, he's just going to run into this passing lane, and he gets a hand on this ball, and he's only able to get one hand on it, not able to bring it in. This is a tendency. It's a tell that the Eagles have. Against pressure, they like to throw screens. When you're that predictable in that sense, you're gonna get you're gonna pay with some big plays. And so I would love to see them tack on, you know, pump fake on that fake screen, max protect, and hit that shot down the field, something like that. You gotta have something you can build on after that because teams are keying into this tendency and it's going to cost the Eagles if they don't change it up. This time it's fourth and five, and the Eagles are gonna go for it, and they've got Kenny Gainwell out wide. They're going to motion him in, and there's not much of a reaction from the defense. So that tells us that we're not playing straight-up man coverage, at least on this bunch. You've got to be doing something here uh, differently because nobody moves with Gainwell. But again, this looks like a cover zero blitz. Now, it's not. This guy's going to bail out into a middle of the field hole. He's going to sort of bail out over the middle. I think the Giants try to get too cute here. Uh, the Eagles are in empty. It's fourth and five. I would just send six guys. You'll see them do that later in the game, but here they don't. Um, and so they do give Jalen Hurts time to throw the ball. You're going to have A.J. Brown on a post route working against this inside corner, and you've got Dallas Goddard on a curl route. And they're both. there could be a throw to be made to both, uh, but Goddard is the primary read. He breaks faster, and Hurts is going to get this ball out. Ball's out right there. A little bit behind him. Makes the catch at the marker for the first down. I think Hertz thought Goddard was going to sit down there. Goddard tried to take it a step or two inside. Again, that's one of those timing things, that communication with your receivers. But Hertz lined up to his target there. You can see he's not under pressure. Uh, that's why I don't really like that play call from the Giants. But uh, from the Eagles' perspective, it's really nice that they gave the Eagles an out and they didn't have to block up six guys. Now down inside the 25, the Giants go single high safety. And I want you to watch the behavior of this safety at the snap of the ball. Because although this shows single high, this is really more like playing split field safety. A safety on each side, except this safety is just not there. There's a half field safety over A.J. Brown's side. This is going to become important later in the game. But you'll notice he just runs to this side of the field. Now, we get a route combination of A.J. Brown on a curl. Dallas Goddard on like a slant post it's a little deeper than a slant on the back side I don't really know what this route combination is we've just got two receivers running vertically right next to each other that's not great but that's not the read side anyways now you're going to read this play out curl to post one to two and the reason we're reading the curl first is it breaks sooner and if you're late on the curl it's a pick six you can't look at the curl and then look at the post and see if it's open and come back it doesn't work that way so people have pointed out online how open Dallas Goddard is on this play watch the safety at the snap already opening up sprinting over now sure is Dallas Goddard open for a touchdown yes that does not matter he is not the primary the primary is AJ Brown and he's open it's a curl route against off coverage balls already out balls right here right AJ Brown catches that you, you get a good chunk there on first down. Now this, again, this is important. We're going to come back to the safety thing later. But I do just want to point out, this is not a miss thing. He doesn't miss Goddard. Goddard's the secondary. And so if A.J. Brown was covered, uh, if that corner sinks underneath, then you find Goddard there. Uh, unfortunate, but that's just how that one plays out. And I promise you, that's not as bad as people online want you to think. Okay, a lot of things I don't like about this one. Uh, we'll talk protection in a minute, but... Let's just say for now there's six potential blitzers. Kenny Gainwell's going out on a route, so there's only five blockers, and all six guys come. And so the Eagles have a choice. Who are you going to leave unblocked? You can leave the defensive end on the right side, defensive end on the left side. You don't want to leave somebody unblocked up the middle. They're going to choose this guy. If you leave this guy unblocked, you should be throwing to this half of the field. Your, your quick throw should be on this half of the field, so you're throwing into him. You're not getting hit in the back. You can confirm he's coming easily. There's a lot of reasons. If you leave the right guy unblocked, you throw to the right. 
Except the Eagles continually do this backwards, and so they're going to leave this guy unblocked, and they're going to try to throw to this half of the field. Now you've got Devonta Smith kind of on a fade. You've got Dallas Goddard on an out route. Now this is a throw you can make. Like Balls out here to Dallas Goddard. Hits him in the hand. You would probably expect Goddard to make that catch. Here's my problem with this play. If you're going to throw to the right, don't shuffle motion Kenny Gainwell out and then release him into the flat. Just keep him into block. Account for all six guys. Like If you're throwing to the right side anyways, just keep Gainwell in. But if you're going to shuffle him out, leave this guy unblocked and throw this hot to Gainwell. I mean, look at Gainwell here. If, if we're reading this to the left, this ball's out to Gainwell right now, or this ball could be out to A.J. Brown. You've got two options you could take on this side. Whichever one you want to be, you're hot. And, and you've got a good chance to score a touchdown. Now, I'm not hating on this throw. This is a good throw. But leave the right side unblocked if this is what you want to do. And the reason why we'll see from the back view, because I want you to watch this shot that Jalen Hurts takes. But... We're sliding out this way, so we're blocking 51 here. We're blocking like this. We leave this edge unblocked, and you can see how he's going to come in. And just watch the shot that Hertz takes here. Like full body weight hitting you, driving that shoulder into the ground. This is how you get a quarterback hurt. I, I don't know why the Eagles are so insistent on leaving the backside defender unblocked. But they've got to change that. You want to throw into that pressure so you can see it coming, you can get the ball out, and you're not taking these shots in the back. But the Eagles continue to do this, and it drives me crazy. And I'm afraid it's going to end up getting Jalen Hurts hurt. Here's one where Hurts and Smith are just slightly off. Uh, the Giants show two safeties high. You've got off coverage. Devonta Smith is going to run just a little curl route here. You notice they kind of spin this coverage a little bit, and it turns out we're bringing pressure. This is like cover zero. And as Devonta Smith is breaking here, now this ball should already be out. See, he's already throttled down. We need this ball coming out faster. And so that's the first thing where the timing's just a little off here. Uh, you want this ball coming out now before Devonta Smith is breaking. But it comes out just a little late, and then Hertz is going to throw the ball this way a little more. And Smith wants the ball up here, and you can see that he tries to come back to it, tries to make an adjustment. He does get a, you know, gets his fingers on it. I think it's a little hard to tell on the all 22, but just a little bit off here between Hertz and Devonta Smith. Um, you know, the blitz doesn't always have to get home to affect you, and here it causes an incompletion by disrupting that timing and rushing Hertz process. Okay, here the Eagles go empty, and the Giants respond with a single high safety. Uh, they've got five guys up on the line. This sure looks like a cover one man blitz to me. And so we're anticipating these five guys rushing. We've got straight man coverage across the board with a safety over the top to help out. Now, remember when I talked earlier about how a single high safety was really playing like a split field safety over A.J. Brown? We're going to see that on this play. So much so that when I watch this on broadcast... You know, I, you can't see past here. I could see the 10 defenders, and Devonta Smith is going to run this choice route and break over the middle, and he's going to catch it, take it for a touchdown, and this guy is so concerned with A.J. Brown, he never even makes it into the picture on the TV. I even asked on Twitter, is there only 10 guys on the field on this play? What happened? Because he never shows up. And so this is something to watch, to monitor. Whenever you go single high, this safety is becoming very concerned with A.J. Brown. And this is really great for Devonta Smith lining up in the slot and getting these choice routes. And so uh, I said it looks like cover one man blitz. It is cover one man. It's not a blitz. Both of these edge defenders are going to sort of bail out uh, over the middle. So the Giants actually only rush three here. But just watch Devonta Smith. Again, he's got the option to come across the middle or to break this out based on leverage. Obviously, the corner is going to play with outside leverage because he's got help inside. And so you just break over the middle here. Hertz puts the ball on him. Again, watch this, this safety all the way over here. He's never even going to get in the play. Shout out to Alameda Zacchaeus for blocking downfield, pancaking into the end zone. You love to see that effort. Uh, I think this is an exploitable thing for teams as you get into the postseason. If the Eagles are able to start running the ball well enough, 
to dictate single high and teams try to keep that extra safety over A.J. Brown, it's going to open up these opportunities either underneath for Devonta Smith or to take those shots to him downfield. And hopefully the Eagles are able to capitalize. This is a third and long here for the Eagles. Third and 15, you can see the edge of the first down marker right here. This is just inexcusable by the Eagles. You're playing a team that likes to blitz. They're showing a blitz look right here with people up in the box. And just watch where all these routes break. I'll just roll the tape here. And you tell me where Hertz is supposed to go with this ball. No route. Your first route is breaking right here, and Hertz has already got a free runner hitting his arm as he th just throws the ball. It's inexcusable for this to be the Eagles' answers to the blitz. Like, I know it's third and long. You can throw short of the sticks against the blitz, and you can maybe pick up some yardage. You can maybe even break a tackle. You've just got to have an answer here. And to me, that answer is right here with Dallas Goddard. When the cornerback that's over you blitzes, like right here, you see him creeping up. You know this is the blitz. This needs to be, I mean, a curl or a slant, like, or even you just continue to run your seam route and you look for the ball. Like The guy responsible for Dallas Goddard is right here. This safety is coming down on Devontae Smith. Like, imagine if Goddard is looking for the ball right now, running up the seam, and Hurts could put this ball on him. You're telling me you don't think he could get to right here? Who's going to tackle him? He's going to get hit maybe right here and fall forward for a first down, but there's just no answer whatsoever here for the blitz. Uh, for Jalen Hurts, what what is he supposed to do? The Eagles continually ask Jalen Hurts to make a guy. You just solve the blitz for us. We're not going to help you out. It's a travesty. It's coaching malpractice that this is how the Eagles are handling the blitz. I mean, this is something I talked about last year after the Eagles' week one game against the Detroit Lions, how they didn't have answers for the blitz. Nearly a year and a half later, it's still a massive issue for this offense, and it's not the last time that we'll see it pop up in this game. This one's kind of a disaster against the Blitz as well, although this is more of just a protection issue and maybe a route combination issue as well. You've got a single high safety. The Eagles are going to run vertical routes on the outside and sort of curl routes on the inside, and so you're trying to stretch this horizontally. Maybe you can find one of these seams. Maybe you can read out which direction the safety leaks, and you can take the one-on-one -on -one shot. No problems there. Problem is going to be that Jason Kelsey gets bulldozed back into the pocket by a blitzing linebacker. And now you're in trouble. Now, does Hertz need to bail the pocket here? Well, there's pressure coming. I would argue that he should probably just slide this way instead of bailing out this way. Maybe he's reading the safety, and so he's wanting to get away from the safety and try to get to the edge and try to work a scramble drill down here. It's not the direction I would like to see him move, but this is your mobile quarterback making a play, breaking a tackle, finds Kenny Gainwell, who's going to pick up the first down. And so that is the escapability Hurts brings you. That is the Jalen Hurts solving the blitz by making a guy miss. Again, you'd like to have better answers to this. Now, it's only a four-man rush, and the Eagles got to do a better job of protecting this. Maybe you don't even, you probably don't even call this a blitz. It's just a weird, muddy look up front. Uh, but Jalen Hurts making a play right there against the Blitz to turn what would have been a negative play into a first down. It's halftime here on the channel. If you're enjoying this video, be sure you smash that subscribe button. Turn on notifications so you get every video, every piece of content that I put out. Uh, I put out weekly all 22s, multiple podcasts on multiple platforms. So make sure you're following me on Twitter and YouTube for all of my content. Now, let's get back to the video. Here the Giants are only going to send four again, but Kavon Thibodeau is going to fake and drop out, and we get an overload blitz, four coming against three. Uh, and, and you're going to get this guy coming free off the edge, but this time the Eagles have an answer. Kenny Gainwell flaring out to the flat where there's nobody. Ball out. First down. Like, it's not hard. It's not rocket science. This is how you beat the blitz. You get the ball out fast to someone under the neath, and you let him go make a guy miss and pick up a first down. Like, this is great. The Eagles need to incorporate this more into their offense. It can't all be running backs. Sometimes you need the quick hitches, the slants, things like that, but you've got to have these answers to the blitz, and here the Eagles have it, and it moves the chains and gets you a first down. Now the Eagles dial up a screen pass to Dallas Goddard. They love tight end screens. I love 
that Devonta Smith's over here. They're not asking Devonta Smith at 165, 170 pounds to be a lead blocker. You've got A.J. Brown and Alameda Zacchaeus out here. Now, this doesn't end up going for a big gain, and part of that's going to be because this guy's blitzing, which is a great look against a screen pass. Alameda Zacchaeus is going to try to block him, and I wish he would have let him go. Like You could let him run himself out of the play here, but it's your responsibility. So I get why he tries to block him. The problem comes in his feet getting tangled up right here. And he's unable to get out here. It's going to impede the offensive linemen coming out here a bit too as they run into each other. But imagine if he was able to get out here. You know, you're blocking this up. You're blocking this up. Lane's turning around. Uh, just minorly, not executed well, but still at that. You know, this is where the line of scrimmage was. Dallas Goddard falling forward. You're getting five, six yards on this little screen pass. It's an easy throw. You're cutting the yardage needed in half on first down. I love this design. Like These are the types of screens that I would like to see. When you have the numbers look, you're throwing behind uh, Alameda Zacchaeus, or you're throwing behind Julio Jones. I think this is the way the Eagles screen game needs to operate. Here we've got vertical routes from the outside receivers, and we've got sort of these post, wrap-in type routes from our inside receivers. Uh, this is something you'll run typically against quarters. Uh, you're trying to put this quarter flat defender, uh, quarter flat defender in a bind because he's only supposed to carry this so far and pass it off to the safety. The safety takes it if it goes vertical. You're trying to thread that needle of breaking in between them here. And uh, the protection holds up here. They keep Kenny Gainwell into block. It's a five man rush. Now, look, you just saw Jalen Hurts squat to start to run. Like he's going to break the pocket here. Just look at the pocket. The pocket's perfect. You've got a flat-footed linebacker here looking at Jalen Hurts with Dallas Goddard breaking inside. Safety's hips are pointed this way. Safety's hips are pointed this way. Like this is this is a hugely open throw that Jalen Hurts has to make. Like you're not under pressure. You can you could throw the ball now and it's open. You can put the ball right here and it's open. You can wait another quarter second. Just wait another tick. One more hitch and get the ball out. And instead, Hertz is going to break the pocket and create pressure for himself. And he throws the ball away. <clears throat> this is a really bad tendency of Hertz to break pockets. And I don't, I don't know why he does this. Like, again, this is a great pocket. You've got a defensive lineman on the ground. You've got everybody's walled off, right? You're under no pressure. And I, again, I cannot stress how open this is. Hertz rolls out and throws it away. You go from a 15-yard play to a second and 10. Hertz has got to get that under control. This is not something that can continue to happen. It's, it's the biggest flaw in Hertz's game right now is how he will bail these pockets and try to extend plays to the sideline. I know on the broadcast they talked about this look from the Giants where you've got defensive linemen standing back here shuffling around. I'm not sure what this is supposed to accomplish. To me, this just makes it so easy to attack the edge in the running game or even to roll out to the edge. Uh, but regardless of that, you got a clear out route here from Julio Jones. You just got a nice little deep out route here from Devonta Smith. No pressure off the edge, which makes this, again, really easy just to shuffle over here if you need to. Hurts patient in the pocket. Balls out to a wide open Devonta Smith down inside the 10-yard line. Easy, easy little look there. Yeah, it convolutes things for your interior offensive line, but I... I don't like this look at all. The Eagles block it up perfectly. Jalen Hurts delivers a strike to Devontae Smith, and the Eagles get down into the red zone. Now down in the red zone, the wheels come off a little bit. There's like 22 seconds left. The Eagles have a timeout. This is, again, this is a cover one blitz look, right? We've got three defenders over three receivers, and technically we've got two defenders down here or three defenders down here over two receivers, you can assume one of those, either one of these guys is coming or he's bailing to the middle of the field. Could be either one. The Eagles just don't have an answer to the blitz. We're in empty. If they send six, it's a free runner. We've got to have an answer. And the Eagles don't. I mean, just watch this. Free guy off the edge. Hey, Jalen, make him miss. Oh, you can't? It's a sack. The play's dead. It drives me crazy watching the Eagles here. Here's how I would draw this play up. This is the guy we're leaving unblocked. We're sliding out this way. Just put Julio Jones on a slant route. 
if he drops into coverage over the middle, if number seven comes over here, fine. But that's that's not what happens here. I mean, you're telling me that you wouldn't take Julio Jones catching a slant at the five yard line, breaks one tackle, and it's a touchdown. You still have a timeout. Like I'd certainly take it over this sack that happens. Guy comes untouched. And there's just nothing there. Where is Hurts to go with this football? I mean, you could throw this out route to Devontae Smith. You don't have time, but you could throw that, but it's also at the five-yard line, and he's going to the sideline instead of slanting towards the end zone like you would want to do with Julio Jones here. Again, the Eagles' lack of answers to the blitz is an Achilles heel for this team. It's going to kill them in the playoffs when they face teams that have time to put together these specific game plans. I can promise you the Eagles are going to see a lot of blitzing against empty. They love to go empty. Just send six. And they're dead in the water. And here we are, the very next play. Now, there's only 13 seconds left, and you don't have a timeout, so that mitigates a little bit of the fact that every receiver goes vertically. Nobody's breaking short of the end zone. There's time constraints on that, I understand. The solution's simple for the Giants. You're an empty. Again, you can only block five guys. We'll send six. We get a free runner no matter what. And there's a free runner right at Jalen Hurts. He doesn't have time to do anything except roll out and scramble. And now you have guys pursuing. Hertz has a brain fart and jukes back inbounds. Uh, The Eagles really fortunate they got to delay a game penalty there. Something I didn't think should have been a penalty. But so what do you do in this situation when you have to throw to the end zone? Well, how about you put a running back in the backfield? And how about you put a tight end on the line of scrimmage and you max protect or at least block six? And you give yourself time for these routes to develop. I understand why everything is downfield, but you just can't do it out of empty. When you don't have the ability to get the ball out quick, you lose the right to call plays from empty against a team that wants to blitz you. It's as simple as that. The Eagles are at their best out of empty. It's very easy to take away if you can't throw underneath, and the Eagles can't here. It should be eliminated from the play sheet in these situations. Here, backed up to the shadow of their own end zone, the Eagles are going to go with one of their favorite comfort calls. That is crash, where we have the inside receiver running the corner route, the outside receiver, who's almost always A.J. Brown, running this in route. Now, the Giants bail Kevon Thibodeau off the line into coverage, and he's going to sort of sync up the seam here. And so it leaves the window open for crash, but it's not like super open. This is something that, again, you could see teams start to do if this becomes a tendency for the Eagles. Notice he's eyes on Devonta Smith. You can sort of sit A.J. Brown down here. You get four or five yards of breathing room. But again, this is one of those tendencies that the Eagles definitely have. In, you know, third and three, four situations in the shadow of your own end zone, the Eagles like to come to this concept. Uh, And similar to the screen earlier, that's something teams can exploit if they know it's coming. Now across midfield, the Eagles are going to go back to another tight end screen. They're going to motion Dallas Goddard outside. What I love about this is this is Julio Jones. You're not running it behind Devonta Smith. You're running it behind Julio Jones and putting him out front to block. You've got two high safeties. You've got the numbers here. You're going to get your offensive line out in front, and you get a convoy. Again, you get offensive linemen peeling back here to seal this off. It's not a big play. But it turns a second and long into a third and four. And now it's third and manageable. And so I like the Eagles' execution on the tight end screen. Uh, It is a good way to beat the Blitz. It can't be your only way to beat the Blitz. But I thought the Eagles, when throwing to Dallas Goddard in these screen situations, I thought it actually worked pretty well in this game. This is the play before the pick six, and this should have been an interception. Uh, You get fast motion across the formation here that's chased, and... The attempt is going to be to throw this in-breaker to A.J. Brown, but watch Bobby Okereke. He makes a good vet move here at linebacker. He's just reading Jalen Hurts' eyes. Sorry, I circled the wrong guy pre-snap. This is Bobby Okereke, and he just eyes on Hurts. Hurts opens up this way, and he's just going to read this, jump this passing lane, gets all ten fingers on it. Uh, Really should have been intercepted. Nice play by the linebacker. Uh, This is one that, I think, I mean, honestly, Hurts just looks at too long. If you know this is this inbreaker and it's this zone coverage, you need to get eyes onto the linebacker to try to freeze him. Um, Eagles really fortunate that that one wasn't intercepted. 
And now we get to the interception on the very next play. Um, this is going to be an RPO. Now, there's litmus test plays to tell you who you should be listening to talk about football. And if anybody tells you this is on Jalen Hurts, they're not somebody you should listen to. Uh, here's how this play is set up. This is an RPO. It's a run-pass option. So first of all, we're leaving this defensive end unblocked. right? If he crashes at the ball carrier, we pull it, and we move on to the pass part of the option. If he gets upfield, right, then we're going to execute the run part of the option. So let's just watch that first. You can see he come, he, that little hesitation inside that gives us the time. Now, could you have given this? You could have given this. It's second and 20. You don't necessarily want to give it, but this is an RPO. We are run blocking here. Um, you could have potentially handed this off. I think it's totally fine that you pulled it out. So if once you pull it out, what's your option here? Uh, as I skip back too far in the video, your option is one of two things. you got an out route to Dallas Goddard against off coverage, or you've got the screen to this side if you like the numbers. So you don't necessarily like the numbers to the bottom. You've got two blockers, right? And you've got three defenders sort of in this vicinity, and you can't get offensive linemen pulling out like you would in other situations because you are run blocking. So even though Devonta Smith ends up being open, these guys kind of bail out. This isn't the look you like pre-snap. The look you like pre-snap is Dallas Goddard against a cornerback and off coverage. And so Hertz pulls the ball. This is open, right? People said he's staring him down. He's doing exactly what he's supposed to. You pulled it. You're making this throw. You're breaking out against a cornerback that's five yards off. Unfortunately, Goddard slips coming out, and it's going to go all the way back the other way. Sometimes you just catch tough break. This is one of those. Uh, you can't anticipate the guy falling down. You know, you, Goddard's got to keep his feet there, but really unfortunate play there that results in actually eight points for the Giants. So here we're going to have A.J. Brown on an out route. It's going to end up being our throw, but it starts with Devonta Smith motioning across the formation. Nothing really changes. Nobody goes with him. <clears throat> We're in zone coverage, more than likely. Now, they're going to bring pressure. And as soon as they bring pressure, you see this safety flying down, and he's bailing out. This is like this looks like some sort of cover two invert, and you're going to throw this corner out. Hertz diagnoses this. Now, as he separates to throw, the safety is starting to come to A.J. Brown, but Brown's already behind him. Like, there's room to throw this. There's room to throw this. Uh, there's really room to throw about whatever you want, but Hertz takes the guy downfield, and I think that's the appropriate read. Puts the ball in a really good spot where only Brown can get it. So good little rhythm throw here from Hertz. Uh, we can see it from the back view here. Takes the snap, sets up, gets the ball out. Only A.J. Brown can get gloves on that. That's a nice little pitch and catch there for the Eagles offense. This time, the Giants are going to bring pressure again. This is clearly a cover zero look pre-snap. Um, you can see right now as he's coming up, he is capping this cornerback. Right? That means he's covering this receiver. This cornerback is going to blitz. We can know that pre-snap by that alignment. So there's nobody deep. Now, at the bottom, the Eagles run crash. We just talked about crash. Uh, you've got the in route, the corner route. Uh, but Hertz goes to the top. And at the top of the screen, I just don't know what this route combination is supposed to be. It's like a 10-yard out route to Dallas Goddard and like a 15-yard corner slash out route to A.J. Brown. It puts them both in the same spot. I'm not sure why Hertz picks the top here. I have no idea what this route combination is supposed to be. But I'm, so, I'm a little surprised that Crash isn't your go-to concept here. Again, I mean, it, it is something they like to throw. And you've got off coverage here against Devonta Smith, who's running an in route, and he's going to have interference from Julio Jones. So had Hurts open to the bottom, and he could make this throw, and you probably get a nice little run after the catch. However, he opens to the top, and at the top, there's nothing there. This is really bad design, in my opinion, against a blitz. Uh, both of these routes at the top are going 10 yards or more, and I just don't know where Hurts is supposed to go with the ball at the top. So he bails out of the pocket, tries to find A.J. Brown on the run, and it just doesn't work out. And again, this is just a fundamental issue with how the Eagles pick up blitzes, right? We're sliding to the right. We're blocking this up. We're blocking this up. And then we've got DeAndre Swift coming across, and he's going to block this blitzing cornerback. But you're also bringing a 
linebacker now who was responsible for Swift. But, you know, in terms of coverage, it's pretty well blocked up. Now, you're going to the ground here. That's not good, but the guy's going with you. Like, there's room to step up and make a throw if there's anything in the middle of the field, but there's nothing here. And, of course, we know from the side view that Devontae Smith is running that in route. It's just not the side Hurts opens to, but no answers to the blitz on the play side, and it's a play that's dead on dead in the water. Now it's third and 20. And let's preface this by saying there are no good plays for third and 20. But having your two receivers run vertical routes right next to each other while the tight end also runs a real vertical post route and your ISO receiver just runs vertical. I'm not sure what you're anticipating getting open here. Like, at least run dagger. Like, run... I don't know. I mean, maybe you're trying to pull these split safeties out and throw the post in between, uh, but you've got to know that we're going to be dropping to the sticks. Like we're not going to let that work. So no good plays for third and 20. Don't love this one. I also think it's a poor decision by the giants to only rush four here. You've been getting to the Eagles with pressure. Just go get them. But Hertz is going to buy time here and he's able to step up and he's able to find AJ Brown. And that's a really good throw on the move. Uh, where only A.J. Brown can get it. We'll see it from the back view here. Even though it's you know six-man protection and a four-man rush, the Eagles don't do a great job of blocking this up. Kelsey gets beat on the inside, but Hertz is able to maneuver the pocket, puts the ball right over the defensive back there to move the sticks. This was a huge play in this game that really uh, changed the momentum as the Eagles felt on the cusp of letting this one get away. Jalen Hurts steps up and makes a big play on third and 20 to keep the Eagles moving. So there you have it. Overall, I thought it was one of the better games that Hertz has played in the last month of football. I thought the offense played well. There were some obvious issues. The pick six uh, takes points off the board. The Eagles settled for four field goals uh, inside the 26-yard line. They lost a possession due to the fumble on the kickoff. But I thought there were a lot of encouraging signs. Jalen Hertz looks more mobile, was used more in the run game, uh, which is obviously a plus. However, Some of the same issues, bailing from the pocket, not having answers for the blitz that have been there for over a year and a half are still present and something the Eagles need to work on if they want to make a serious run in the postseason. 